Um, didn't I really did not want to start the video off with news like this, but um, Makai Becton got hurt today in practice, and I don't want to overreact because we don't know the severity of it, but according to multiple Jet Beat reporters here, Rich Samini, Dennis Wazak, uh, Connor Hughes, it's an apparent leg injury, okay? Now, ESPN reported that it's to the same leg that he's been, you know, experiencing the discomfort uh, over the past couple of days, and as we all know, he was wearing the brace and everything like that. Coming back from a year-long injury, right, getting hurt week one last year against the Carolina Panthers... Um, it sucks. It really sucks. Um, you know, throughout this whole process, throughout the whole, you know, this entire training camp period, going back to mandatory mini camp, it's been, let's limit the injuries. Of course, it's football. It's a contact sport. People are breaking. People are planting with their legs. Uh, I get it. You know, guys get injured, but this was the nightmare scenario this was the nightmare headline makai becton hurt again okay now i'm not gonna sugarcoat it i'm uh i'm i'm pretty pissed now again i don't want to overreact hopefully it's something minor uh connor hughes actually did go on to report that joe douglas did not look happy when the jets actually like broke for a play uh jd walked over to robert sala and the two started talking what makes matters even worse is that connor by the way Tackle, as we all know here, is a pretty thin position on the New York Jets. We didn't really address it. We didn't really get that big name free agent tackle. They didn't really go out and draft a guy in the first, second, or third round. It wasn't until Max Mitchell, and I like Max Mitchell a lot. I just don't know how I feel about Mitchell in year one as a rookie. I think I'm, I feel good about it maybe year two, definitely year three, year four. I like his upside. I like his versatility. I like his size and uh, the demeanor in which he plays with. But for this season, it was clear that the Jets were counting on George Fant and Makai Becton to be the starting two tackles. Now that's obviously up in the air. And interestingly enough, I was actually going to start this video off before we kind of talked about the practice uh, by talking about Dwayne Brown and how I was shocked that nothing really came out yesterday. I felt like you know, there's obvious interest there with Connor McDermott going down with an injury. You know, the Jets would probably get that done because it's not like Dwayne Brown is some, you know, uh, player that's fighting for his NFL life or anything like that. He can play. You know, he was a full time starter last year for the Seahawks. He's a former pro bowler, a veteran, uh, veteran in this league. You know, obviously has some uh, chemistry and continuity with some of the, you know, former Seahawks that are now on the Jets. Um, I, I think it would really be a solid match. And now when we're looking at that situation, Dwayne Brown possibly signing with the Jets, it makes total sense. It makes total sense. Uh, quite frankly, it needs to get done at this point. Uh, no more waiting around. I know that the Jets don't have tons of cap space at this very moment, but, um, you know, and it, it will be interesting to see how the Dwayne Brown camp responds. What, what, what is their asking price? I'm not sure, but this has got to be addressed. Okay. This was every jet fans fear an injured player, an injured starter for the team, especially at a position that's very, very thin. Okay. Now let's just, you know, explore the hypotheticals here. Let's just say Dwayne Brown wants too much money. Let's just say the Jets don't feel comfortable with them. Who are some other guys out there? There's plenty. There's plenty of guys not saying these guys are all top 20 tackles or anything like that, but they are better than the backups that the Jets currently have. Okay. That's the point. Nate Solder, Brandon Shell, Daryl Williams, Eric Fisher, you can maybe strike up a deal with the Philadelphia Eagles for Andre Dillard. Maybe a Tevin Jenkins from the Chicago Bears. There's some uh, some weird storylines coming out of Chicago with Jenkins. Obviously, former high pick, uh, second round pick out of Oklahoma State. He was a guy that Joe Douglas really, really liked. Just played so nasty, so aggressive uh, or aggressively a violent football player, but it doesn't really seem like he's going to be a fit in Chicago moving forward. Uh, supposedly him, the coaching staff don't really see eye to eye. I know he hasn't really been practicing. So a strange situation there, but Andre Dillard's coming over from uh, from Philadelphia, right? That's where Joe Douglas was before he was, you know, with the New York Jets. So I, I think a move has got to be made here. If the Jets don't do anything, I am going to be extremely disappointed and that's an understatement they gotta make a move 
it was a thin position coming in to the green and white scrimmage game. Connor McDermott, the backup, it seemed like the backup left tackle went down. Now Makai Becton, the starting right tackle, is down with an injury. Again, I don't want to overreact. I don't know how bad the injury is going to be. Hopefully, it's just a couple days. Hopefully, it's a week. But in the case that it's not... The Jets have got to do something here because we cannot roll out into next season with a quarterback going into year two, a lot of young guys all over the roster expected to make jumps, uh, expected to have big impacts and, uh, you know, roll out a depleted football team. Okay, so... Zach Rosenblatt from The Athletic reported that almost immediately Zach Wilson was almost pressured on every play. Uh, the Williams brothers were involved. I know Jacob Martin had a would-be sack uh, beating Chuma Adoga. And it's clear the defensive line has just been winning throughout the course of training camp. And, you know, whenever you're talking about an NFL team, training camp, the defense should always have the leg up early. But, uh, I mean, these guys, it seems like they're having their way with their uh, with the offensive line. I'm not there, I'm not witnessing everything firsthand, but from everything that we've heard, you know, for the Jets to be having success on the inside, from the outside, numerous players having success. It's not just one guy and everybody else is just kind of there. No, everybody is getting in the backfield. Um, if the ta and I, I hate to keep harping on the tackle position here, but it's really the only thing kind of just hovering over my, uh, you know, my head right now. If this is going to be the Achilles heel for the 2022 Jets, then it's going to be a problem, okay? Because it's not like a swatted pass. It's not like an interception. It's not like an incompletion or a really, really poor throw. If, the, if you're a young quarterback, if you're second-year quarterback who's still trying to learn, progress, uh, just be, really fulfill his own potential, if he can't develop the right way because he's being rushed, if he's constantly picking himself up off of the turf, if he's getting banged up and injured, we've seen this story over and over and over again. David Carr, Andrew Luck, I'm not saying that's going to happen, but you know, if, if it is the case, then it's just not a recipe for success. Okay, and of course, you know, some sacks do fall on the quarterback. That's completely understandable. It's not 100% on the offensive line. We do have to give credit to the defensive line. And sometimes quarterbacks, young quarterbacks with big arms, will hold on to the football uh, a lot longer than needed. Um, but overall, you know, the injury stuff aside, Zach Wilson could develop bad habits and everything like that. I don't even want to go down that rabbit hole. I don't, you know, you can actually point to Christian Hackenberg, you know, a stud high school quarterback gets to Penn State with Bill O'Brien, lights it up as a true freshman, sophomore year, junior year, what happens? He, he continues to get hit, continues to get sacked. He started to develop some really bad habits, uh, trying to deliver passes early, staring at the rush, taking his eyes off of the pass catchers, bailing out of the pocket early. I mean, this is not good stuff for the long-term development of quarterbacks, you know, and I don't mean to bring this up or, you know, no pun intended here, but you hear the term all the time of ghosts and, you know, defensive lines haunting quarterbacks and everything like that. It's from continuing to get hit, continuing to fail and uh, not knowing what to do because you don't have that much time to throw. So the Jets have got to do something here. It has got to be addressed. Outside of that situation, though, there was some good. Tyler Conklin supposedly looked really, really solid today, actually had a highlight type of catch uh, from Zach Wilson. And when Wilson was not pressured, he looked good. I think he started the day three for three. He was two of three on third down drills, uh, getting guys like, again, Conklin the football, uh, CJ Uzama, another guy. Now, it's good to hear that it wasn't all bad, uh, but going back to the defensive line here, Jermaine Johnson had multiple sacks. Jacob Martin had multiple sacks. Uh, it seemed like the defensive line was just living in the backfield today. To touch on the kicker position, Eddie Pinheiro, again, was perfect with his field goals. Greg Zerline, on the other hand, went two for four. Okay, so 50%. It's not a positional battle where the Jets don't like either guy. I think they actually really like both. And it's like, hey, the best man is going to win here. Uh, so it's a true competition. So anyway, I'll leave it there. Let me know your thoughts down below in the comment section. Um, once news breaks on what the ex uh, what the exact injury is going to be, I'll try to find it and pin it down below in the comments uh, if you guys haven't done that already. Because um, you guys are always on top of everything, always tagging me and stuff. You guys are great. Uh, but yeah, it it's got to be addressed. It's got to be addressed. Thanks so much for watching. And as always, go Jets.